In this video, we're going to talk about Bohr models. A Bohr model is something that shows atomic structure. So basically, it's just a way to show how the atom is arranged. So a Bohr model includes the things that an atom includes, so protons, neutrons, and electrons. In Bohr models, each circle represents an energy level that the electrons are at. So each circle tells you what energy those electrons are. The ones closest to the nucleus are the lowest energy, and then the electrons increase in energy as they get farther and farther away from the nucleus. So the shells closest have the least energy, the shells farthest have the most energy. And that will be important when we start to talk about bonding. But these energy levels are called shells. So each circle on a Bohr model is called a shell. So let's talk about how to draw a Bohr model. To start, you need to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, which you can do from the periodic table. Then you'll draw the nucleus. And the last step is to put the electrons into the correct shells. Now there's a trick about the shells. The shells can only fit certain amounts of electrons. So the first shell can fit two, second shell can fit eight, and the third shell can fit eight. So just keep this in the back of your mind, and we're going to use this to draw some Bohr models. Definitely have the periodic table out whenever you need to draw Bohr models because all the information comes from the periodic table. So the first step is to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And again, you do that from the periodic table. So let's start there. Set yourself up like this for everyone. Protons, neutrons, electrons. So let's use helium first. Helium is up top here. <laughs> So helium's atomic number is 2. Remember, the atomic number always tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. And because there are two protons, that must mean that there are also two electrons because it's a neutral atom, so the charges have to cancel. So as many protons as I have, I need electrons as well. And then the atomic mass of helium is 4. So again, remember, protons plus the neutrons is the atomic mass. So if I already had 2, but my atomic mass is 4, 2 plus 2 must equal that atomic mass of 4. So helium is a pretty basic example. It has the same amount of everything. So this is how you start. This is step number 1. Step 2 is to draw the nucleus. So the two particles that are in the nucleus, again, are these protons and neutrons. So let's go over and draw this in a different color. So we have two protons, and we have two neutrons, all right, and this is our nucleus. Now that I have my nucleus drawn, I'm ready to go on to step number three, which is to put the electrons into their shells. And remember, there were only certain amounts that each shell can hold. Remember, shell one can hold two, shell two can hold eight, shell three can hold eight. So because helium only has two electrons, that means we only need one shell. So we're going to draw one circle, and that first shell can hold two electrons. So we'll just add those two electrons. So voila, this is your Bohr model for helium. This with another one. Let's try lithium. So again, your first step is to find the number of protons neutrons, and electrons. Lithium's atomic number is three. That means there must be three protons. Because there are three protons, there must also be three electrons. Now, lithium's atomic mass is seven. So I know I already have three in the protons plus neutrons. I have three. So what plus three equals seven must be four. So there are more neutrons in lithium. Lithium must be an isotope. We'll talk more about that next class. So we've completed step one. Step two is to go ahead and draw the nucleus. So we have three protons. One, two, three. We have three 
or actually this time four neutrons because it's an isotope. One, two, three, four in our nucleus. Now we need to go on to adding the electrons for step three. Now remember the electrons, different shells can hold different amounts. The first shell can hold two, second shell can hold eight, third shell can hold eight. So we need to get to three. Let's add in our first energy shell. And this one can only hold two. But look, I need to get to three. So let's add in the two. When you add electrons, you normally add them in pairs on the Bohr model. So we've got three. We need to get to three, but we only have two so far. So I filled up my first energy shell. What that means is I need to add another one in order to fit the three that I need to get to. So I'll add one more. Now I have one, two, three electrons, and I needed three all along. So this is the complete Bohr model for lithium. Let's try this same thing one more time for aluminum. My protons, neutrons, and electrons, always my first step. So I have how many protons in aluminum? Let me look on my periodic table. 13 is the atomic number, so 13 number of protons. Because there are 13 protons, there must be 13 electrons. My atomic mass of aluminum is about 27. So what plus 13 equals 27? It's 14. So you can see on the side, I'll just do it if you're not super quick at math like me. So 13 plus 14 is 27. So that's just showing you how I got that stuff in the first place. All right, so step one complete. Step two, add the nucleus, or draw the nucleus. So 13, whew, it's going to be a big one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 protons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 neutrons, because it's an isotope, which we'll talk more about. All right, so now I need to get 13 electrons, my third step, to fill in those shells. Remember these numbers, 2, 8, 8. So I need to get to 13. So you might be already guessing that I'm going to need a couple extra shells. So let's add in my first shell. I can only fit two, so I'm going to just go ahead and do that. But I need to get to 13, so I have a ways to go. So let's add the second shell. I can fit 18 or 8 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight electrons. So now my first shell is full, my second shell is full. Oh man, but I still need three more. So that means I need to draw a third shell. This one can also fit eight. I already have 10, so I only need three more. So let's just add those in. One, two, three. Now I have 13 electrons. So now I have a completed diagram or model of aluminum.